this video we are going to discuss about uh, the movie recommendation system and uh, in movie recommendation system we are available with two data sets the first data set is tmdb underscore 5000 underscore movies and uh, this is the movie database let's study about the columns which are present in this database the first column is of budget and uh, you can see there are uh, entries in the budget which is in a numerical uh, format okay so this might represent the budget of a particular movie the second column represents the genres the genres means uh, the category to which a movie uh, belong whether the movie is an action movie or uh, it's a adventure movie or it's a again uh, we can have different kind of uh, categories for example fantasy also so you can see that in this particular column the entries are available in list of dictionaries format okay so here we can say that this is id its value is 28 name its value is action again id 12 name adventure and so on so this is uh, a column a data or genres which is present in list of dictionaries format. The next column represents your homepage or the website or the link of the movie. Okay, that means the web page of the movie. Another column represents the ID. This is the identification for the movie. Again, the numerical set of values, and it's not like that a serial number or something like that okay it's an identification number and every movie has been identified by certain uh, unique certainly a unique number okay your next column represents the keywords okay and these keywords represents that uh, what specific word or uh, a movie has been having a kind of information or the data related to it that means uh, for example if uh, the movie if i talk about here the avatar so the avatar movie is having culture clash it has been having the future okay and uh, space for so something these keywords resemble that what a movie comprises of basically so these are certainly the keywords again the point here is the same that uh, uh, this column also uh, having your list of dictionaries okay you can see that here is also the list of dictionaries the next one is your original language okay so the ori original language of the movie is the language in which uh, the movie has been uh, created so ian represents the english language the next column represents the original title that is the real title of the movie for example here is, the, here is avatar the next one is pirates of the caribbean spectre and so on this is the original title of the movie original name of the movie okay then the next column is of overview overview is uh, basically a short description of the movie okay so here it comprises of the text which represents the general information what does uh, short summary of the movie what is present in it what's the story the next one is the popularity of the movie so this is certainly the ratings which has been present on uh, tmdb website okay so um, how the people has rated to the movie so it comprises of certain numerical values this is floating point values values basically okay for example the popularity of avatar movies 150.437577 so on okay these are respectively the popularities of other movies the next one is your prediction company okay so who produce the movie their name is pre present in the production company okay for example if you talk about avatar it has been produced by ingenious film partners and uh, 20th century fox okay so that means uh, we are having two producer companies for it okay again we can see that the data set here is also in a form of your dictionaries that is a list of dictionaries okay so various dictionaries are present here they are separated by comma and finally they are coming under a list okay so all the entries here are available in a form of list of dictionaries so these are the production companies okay the next one is your 
production countries that means who are the countries who uh, produce these movies so for example here is the us okay for avatar that is the united states of america okay and uh, then another company who did the contribution for it in the form of uh, production that is the gb great britain or you can say that united kingdom okay so again here the data has been present into uh, form of a uh, list of dictionaries itself okay because uh, we have multiple entries for uh, um, every column so as per already available data set we are dealing we haven't done any refinement uh, refinements from our side whatever we are doing that means been uh, working on the available data set so this is what available uh, to us and uh, as it is we are understanding the data set the next column comprises of your uh, release date okay so these are the years in which the movies has been released so date is uh, here is the complete date that means the day month and the year okay and then the next column is of revenue how much revenue uh, they have generated so, so these are certainly the numerical figures okay the next one is the run time that means how many days the movie okay i just assume that uh, the days number of days the uh, movie uh, has been uh, running okay in the theaters that is a runtime or I, I just say that runtime might be uh, if i'm if i'm just being wrong uh, might be an understanding uh, the fact that runtime could be something that is the length of or the duration of the movie so 162 is a 162 minutes okay it's about a 162 minute movie Okay, it's not like that uh, the number of days it ran into the theaters. It is the, num the number or the duration of the movie. Okay, so here all the values has been mentioned. The next one is your uh, spoken languages. So previously, we studied that what is the original language of the movie. So it has been uh, mentioned for Avtar. That means we have seen here that uh, it has been having English as a base language. However, uh, here we did mention that uh, how many other languages that uh, the movie has been uh, released. So it has been released in English. It has been uh, also released in ES or the Spanish. Again, we can see that this is also a list of dictionaries. Okay, because if we are having multiple values here, the data set been, has been organized in a form of list of dictionaries. Okay, so for Avatar, we are having EN also, we are having ES also, that is a Spanish language. Okay, the next one is the status of the movie, whether they are released, unreleased or whatsoever. So um, here we can see that the movie is released. They have mentioned released. The next one is the tagline or the punchline for the movie. Okay, so the tagline or the punchline represents that uh, Again, it's a text, okay, something has been written about the movie that has entered the world of Pandora, for example, uh, it has been talked for the Avatar, okay, and uh, the other ones are being mentioned. If there is no tagline or the punchline, then it has been kept as an empty, okay. Now, here is a title, here is the movie title. So, we are having two things, one is the original title, one is the movie title, okay. If uh, original name of the movie is something different and uh, later on the title has been changed and, and has been given to the new title, then it's been mentioned here. Okay. And if it is not, then both are seen. So here's the title or the movie name. Okay. For example, Avatar, Pirates of the Caribbean, Spectre and so on. The next column is of uh, vote average or the vote percentage. How many uh, ratings has been uh, given to that uh, particular uh, movie? Okay. Because uh, we will be having... Uh, the people or the reviewers who used to give the votes to the movies okay that means they used to rate the movies so here is the vote average average vote given to that particular movie that may be the rating around 10 for the 10 so here it is 7.2 ratings has been given to the avatar movie okay and the value uh, count for the votes that is a vote underscore count here it is mentioned as 11,800 that means 11,800 people has voted for this particular movie and the rating we have found as 7.2 okay so this is our first data set that is tmdb 5000 movies here the name uh, itself means that we are available with the data set of 5000 movies the next data set which we are having is of tmdb credits okay so what's uh, available in the credits again the first column in the credit is movie underscore id so we have seen the same thing the id the id column in uh, 
TMDB underscore 5000 underscore movies data set also. There was an ID column. And this ID column and uh, this movie underscore ID column and that ID column are uh, same because the ID given to the movies are same. Okay. Now the next uh, column here is the title or the name of the movie. So the title is also been available in that data set. Title is also available in this data set. And these are respectively the main name of the movies with respect to the ID numbers. Okay, we can see that Avatar, Pirates of the Caribbean, Spectre, The Dark Knight Rises and so on. And the next column is of your cast who did work in the movie. Okay, so we can see that here um, that the character who uh, took the role that is Jack Sully. Okay. And uh, the detail of this particular character has been completely available in uh, this data set. If we talk about this credits data set, okay. So here again, we are uh, having other characters also, for example, Sam, okay. And uh, here uh, it's again uh, dictionaries, list of uh, dictionaries only, okay. And uh, there are various characters which are being mentioned here in this list of dictionaries okay so again we have all the cast id character name what is the gender what is the credit id all has been mentioned here in the respective column cast okay fine so this is what we are having when uh, having with in our credits data set Okay, now let's get to the coding section and uh, we implement our movie recommendation system. So basically the movie recommendation system is something we are building a system and uh, that is based upon your content basically because uh, we are having different types of movie recommendation system. It has been collaborative also, it has uh, been content based also. So here we are going to recommend the movies on the basis of the content. Okay, so let's get started with the code. The first thing is we'll, we are going to import the library. So the basic libraries which we do include in our project is the pandas for data frames, for creating the data frame. NumPy, that is for uh, performing operations on multidimensional arrays. Matplotlib, this uh, this library is for uh, data visualization. Seaborn, this is again for the data visualization. IPython is an interactive Python. That means I am doing the code on the Jupyter notebook, so I am just being interacting with this application. Okay. Again, it's an optional uh, library. Import warnings and warning and uh, dot filter warnings ignore. Uh, these li this library is again an optional library, and I just included uh, this library. Because if in case I get some warning uh, messages or some other messages while executing the code, so I'm going to ignore it. Okay. Now, the next thing is I need to import our data set. So I have taken two variables, movies and the credits. In movies, I will store the movies data set. Okay. Which has been accessed in a way like pd.read underscore csv. So I'm reading the csv file. Okay. And uh, that is uh, your tmdb underscore 5000 underscore movies dot csv. And I am uh, saving it into movies variable. Similarly, I am uh, reading your credits file. Okay. And I am saving it into credits variable. The next is I am going to print the first five rows of uh, movies variable. Okay. So here is the first five rows of movies variable. The next, I printed the last five rows of the movies variable. So head and tail. Okay, these two methods are used to print the first five rows and the last five rows of a variable. Or I just say it's a data frame right now. So the, here are here we have two data frames. So we have accessed the CSV file converted into data frame. So movies and the credits. These are the two data frames. Here I have printed the head and tail of the movies data frame. Now the next one is here is the shape of the movie data frame that is 4803 comma 20 that is the number of rows and here is the number of columns the next i printed the number of columns which are present in my movies data frame so here are the number of columns which are present in it next i checked whether they are any uh, 
duplicated values present in my data frame movies so i found that there are no duplicate values available next i try to check whether how many null values are present in my movies data frame so here i can see that there are null values in uh, home page okay there are some null values in release date in uh, runtime and in tagline we are having the null values remaining okay in overview also we are having three null values remaining we don't have any null values so we have checked the null values and calculated the sum of it so here each and every column is showing that whether they are having uh, what number of null values okay now the next is we have checked the information of our data frame movies so it has been telling the complete information okay that means all the column names okay and uh, it has been telling how many non null values present in it and what is the data type of each and every column okay so here we are at the last we can see that we are having three floating point values four integer type values and 13 object type values here and the memory utilization uh this has been taking in my system is 750.6 plus kilobytes okay this is what the storage has been required by it now the next thing is your movies description so movies description is certainly a statistical information about the movies data frame where we pick only the numerical values to describe our uh, data okay so here uh, these are certainly the numerical values budget id popularity revenue and so on so here we are going to print the count that means how many entries are there for each and uh, each respective columns here what is the mean value of uh, these respective columns what is the standard deviation minimum and the maximum values of uh, each of them okay and then here is the first percentage distribution of the data that is 25 percent 50 percent and 75 percent data distribution for each and every columns mentioned here okay so it is just an statistical information related to it the next one is the credits so we did printed the first five rows for the credits and we found that there are various other columns which are unnamed columns okay um, since we have access the data set available to us as it is in the same format so we just uh, found that okay it has also encountered various other uh, columns also which are having null entries so what to do first i printed the first five uh, first five rows and the then the next five rows with the tail for the credits then i printed the shape and the columns of the credits i checked the duplicate values for the credit and null values for the credit so uh, here you can see that from the column number four we are having too many values which are been ex completely null or empty values so what to do i just been taking that means i have created a new data frame from the existing data frame so here the credits is the existing data frame by the help of it i have created a new data frame again i have um, just name it as a credits only nothing else okay i could have used another name also uh, but what i did is i have uh, kept the same name for the credits uh, uh, data frame okay so here i took movie id title cast and crew only these uh, four columns i took for my operation okay fine so we have also uh, we, we did seen about this data set credits and i explained you about movie title and the cast there is one more column which i think i uh, should have uh, explained you about so this is the crew okay if we talk about one more column so that is uh, the crew column i guess it's not been visible here at this moment okay so here uh, let's uh, no worries now crew but once uh, we get this data set we found that there is one more column that is the crew okay so i took all these four columns and created a new data frame credits now the next thing is i printed the information of the credits okay so uh, this is certainly the description that means these are the four columns these are the non-null values which are present in our uh, 
data frame and this is the data type so all of them are having the same data type that is of object okay it's all of object data type and here is the memory utilization now if we talk about the description see uh, it's not mandatory to uh, print this uh, statistical information about the credit because the reason is we are already available with only the object type values okay that means the uh, the values which are being available in the form of a text okay so there are no numerical values so it doesn't make any sense that uh, printing the description for the credit so still anyhow i just printed the description next um, i printed how many unique values present in my complete movie data frame and unique okay so unique values present in my data frame movies okay so here i found that here as per uh, my understanding status is having three values okay three. so this is categorical remaining all is not at all a category it might happen that original languages can be considered as a category 37 entries are pr present in it and uh, here the status is having three values remaining all are having mm, the high values okay so they are not categorical so credits and unique we have also printed the unique values for the credits data frame so they are already high so there is no category value available here so what we are going to do here is we are creating a new data frame again we'll put it uh, name as a movies and we are going to merge the initial data frame movies with the new uh, with the credits data frame as we know that we are working with the two data frames initially we are having movies data frame also we are having credits data frame also so the new thing which we are going to do is we are going to merge these two data frames and the merging of these two data frame has been based upon the title okay so on the basis of title we are going to merge these two data frames and again i'm going to put the, uh, its name as movies okay same name movies now again i print the first five rows of the movies by movies.head okay now both the data frame has been merged and now i'm available with only one data frame that is the movies I printed the shape of that particular data frame movies that is 4809 and 23 that is uh, rows here are the number of rows and here are the number of columns for it now the next is i have created a, another data frame in which i took only some features of the existing data frame because i don't have any uh, importance related to your runtime vote okay count okay I, I don't require all these things only the things which matter to us that is here i perform some feature engineering feature extraction and i took only few columns for my work i took id title overview generis cast crew and keywords and created a new data frame movies underscore feature okay then here i dropped the empty or the null values which are present in my data frame okay in by drop any that means I, if i need to draw uh, drop uh, the null values which are present in uh, your rows okay so i'll be taking the drop any okay so i'm dropping or i'm uh, just uh, creating a new data frame which is not consisting of any null values okay then i printed your first row of generis okay the first row of generis is this here is the first row of generis okay by statement iroc 0 dot generis i could have printed like this also movies underscore df dot generis 0 i could have printed like this but uh, this is also another form where i do access the first row entries of the generis okay so here is the value for it now uh, what i'm going to take is abstract syntax tree ast so i'm going to import this library abstract syntax tree because the reason is I need to access uh, some keywords from this particular data set and the reason is um, as uh, we have seen that we are available with the list of dictionaries okay so how to implement this list of dictionaries and how to access the relevant data out of it for that reason I'm taking AST so what AST will do it will import the names in a class defined as an AST module it is used to express the import statement in python in form of an abstract syntax tree here the parsing has been done okay in ast we used to do the parsing okay and we are going to collect the keywords which are important for us with the help of ast so what i'm going to do is 
I am creating a uh, method that is uh, convert. Okay. So df convert obj. I am creating an empty list here. L. For i in ast dot literal underscore eval obj, whatever the object which we are going to give here in uh, your uh, convert method, it will append all these values to my empty list. Okay. And then it will return L to us. Okay. So literal underscore eval, this is the method which is one of our helper function that will be traversing our list uh, or I just say it will traverse our abstract syntax tree and uh, here it includes an expression of the node okay there will be some expression will be created because it's a tree like structure so there will be node there will be leaves so there will be complete traversing of that particular tree okay and uh, here it will be going to collect your keywords and all the keywords which it will be uh, collecting it will be appending it all to your l which is your empty list okay so um if it about the generis that means it is a list of dictionary with a name it holds the generis because there is a name in uh, our uh, generis okay if you talk about this here is the name okay there is one uh, key value pair so key is the name value is action okay every time name uh, is a key and here is a uh, your, its value that is adventure fantasy okay with the name so what we are going to do is we are going to apply uh, this method that is convert obj over your generis okay we are going to apply over this and uh, we are going to convert okay apply dot convert okay this is how we used to apply a method to a data frame okay Okay, no respective column. So movies underscore df generates to this column. I'm going to apply this convert method. Okay, and it will collect all your uh, name. Okay, it will collect all your name because you know here we are talking about name only. Okay, here we are going to append the names. Okay, so there will be parsing. Okay, our uh, complete this list of dictionary will be passed and it will be organized in the form of a tree abstract syntax tree and uh, from there we the help of with the help of a literal underscore evaluation method we are going to pick uh, your uh, respective keyword for the name okay so it will be all available in our uh, list okay l so action adventure fantasy that will all be available in our list okay so here uh, it is i have displayed your movies underscore d, uh, d of generis okay and uh, it has been letting us know that all the names which belongs to the generis has been collected and now we have created the new generis call previously it was like a list of dictionaries now it is just only a list of the names okay similarly now we have printed the head first five rows of our uh, movies data frame same task we did applied on the keywords okay keywords also we did applied the same function and respectively we have collected the keywords okay so here it is cultural clash future space war space uh, and uh, other things okay what are the keywords which are present in the movies we did collected everything okay with the same method then again we have printed our uh, first five rows of the movies underscore df column then the next one is i have printed the cast okay the first row of the cast so movies underscore df dot ilc zero dot cast this is how i printed the first row of the cast okay what i'm going to do here is i am creating a new method that is convert three obj okay and uh, i am going to collect the top three cast from my uh, cast column okay so for that what i'm going to do here also the again the name has been available okay there is a value name available so uh, we are going to use the compatible uh, method again so the, here is a new method which i created df convert 3 obj again i created an empty list count initially i took as zero okay i applied the for loop here as I did uh, in the previously in the convert method. So for i in ast dot literal underscore evil object, if count is less than three, for example, if you are having uh, three or uh, more than uh, three uh, names in the cast, so I'm just going to take the top three cast. Okay, so if the count is less than three, then we are going to append the name, else, else that's okay. Okay, 
so uh, here count plus equal to one so every time if you are having uh, initially the count is zero okay so if there is one cast added uh, second cast added third cast added okay and for others we need, do not have to work uh, upon because we are just taking count less than three okay only only three people on the top three cast we need to take and then we are going to return it so here we did uh, applied uh, this method over the cast and here is i have printed the cast the top three people okay the top three people in every movie again i printed the first five rows of the movies i did check for the overview also okay for overview i printed the first row okay and then i applied a lambda function over the um, overview in lambda function what i did is i splitted all i splitted every word in the overview okay I splitted every word in the overview. So what I did is movies underscore df overview dot apply lambda x colon x dot split. Okay, so I'm splitting every word which has been present in the overview if they are separated by white spaces. Okay, so every uh, word has been separated here. Fine, so here is what the output I got. You can see that there is a list in comma the comma second comma century and so on. Here is a list. Okay, now the next again I printed the first five rows of my movies. Then the thing is, uh, I don't require crew column, though it also consists of uh, certain uh, important information. It consists of uh, the director's information and I guess assistant director's information also we could have considered and we could have. Uh, applied the same uh, phenomena as we did for the other columns like uh, convert to columns okay but uh, right now i'm dropping the screw and we will perform movie recommendation on the basis of the above uh, information okay so i'm dropping this uh, column that is screw about uh, because this is a column so i'm just taking access equal to one so this has been dropped okay now the thing is i'm going to take these uh, three columns that is the cast generis and the keyword i'm going to apply a method called as collapse okay so what does collapse is doing again what i'm taking here is empty list for i in l l1 dot append i dot replace if we are having uh, this kind of uh, quotations okay that means a uh, space so i'm just uh, replacing this by uh, this kind of uh, quotations okay and i'm returning l1 Fine. So I'm not taking any empty spaces uh, here. I'm just uh, replacing this empty spaces this by uh, this. Okay. So this is what I did applied for each and every column, cast and on the keywords. Then the next what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new column in my data frame that is the tags. Okay, tags. So tags has been created by adding movies overview movies generis keywords and the cast okay so i'm creating tag by adding all these so there is a new uh, column has been created fine now what i'm going to do is um, because i don't want to uh, do uh, any changes in my existing data frame so i created a copy okay so i created a new data frame that is movies underscore df underscore new by this data frame movies underscore d so i created a copy of it then the next is uh, again what it happened uh, was i need to drop the crew column so i did drop the crew from it okay i dropped the uh, crew from it i printed its first five uh, rows okay then again i applied the feature engineering or the feature extraction and uh, from here i took id title and tag only three features and uh, created a new data frame that is new underscore df out of it so every time i just putting some changes okay because i don't want to hurt the initial data frame so and i'm just also performing the feature extraction so uh, here i did uh, perform the feature extraction i did took id title and tags only remaining i don't require because the reason is tag is already the combination of all these data frames generis also keywords also cast also overview also so this uh, tags is already a combination of these four so there is no sense of writing it again and again so i just it's better to take uh, only tags okay and a title and the id okay next i printed the first five rows for new underscore df 
okay then i applied uh, um, lambda function over the tags okay and uh, if there is uh, spaces between the words okay so i made it as a join join all those words okay so here i performed the join operation in the 22nd century uh, this uh, captain barbosa and uh, they are so uh, i just uh, performed the join operation over the tags okay and then i uh, printed the first five rows of the tags so you can see that we are having the tags that means it's a complete information of your what is the complete information it comprises of your overview also you can see that tag comprises of the overview also tag comprises of the generis also keywords also and cast also complete information tag for a respective movie so for example if i just say i take a movie avatar okay and i print it's uh, first that is avatar is present at the first position so if i do print its uh, value the first row value so here you can see that in the complete thing complete thing has been available okay uh, till uh, here okay and uh, then it comprises of your uh, cast people also so whatever be uh, whatever is important for us in uh, creating the movie recommendation we did took all the details okay so cast also we did took overview we also did uh, uh, took okay and uh, certainly the keywords also here it is also mentioned keywords also we did took generis also we did took okay so everything has been available here fine now we did applied count vectorizer okay because as we are working with the natural language processing okay and we need to convert text into vectors because this is the process this is a phenomena okay so i am incorporating here a library that is called as a count vectorizer so count vectorizer is basically it's a greatest tool so this is the library i'm taking it from the scikit learn and it is used to transform the text into vector format that means it will be tagging the text which is available in my uh, this uh, document okay uh, that means a data frame and i'm going to tag it with a, a certain uh, you know some identifiers along with it okay so these scalar tags will be converted into vectors all right so for uh, what we are going it is used to transform each text into vectors on the basis of frequency of occurrence okay for example if uh, any of uh, the text we are taking any of the word from the text we are taking and what is the frequency of that particular word of occurrence in the complete document with the help uh, of uh, this count vectorizer we are going to tag it for example it has been uh, repeating five times or ten times or fifteen times or whatsoever so it will be converted into uh, this word and along with uh, the number of repetition or the occurrence or the frequency of it okay so uh, here here is a library a scale and feature extraction import count vectorizer count vectorizer here is the constructor to this class count vectorizer and uh, we are giving it some arguments that means some maximum features which we can give here is a 5000 okay because we are available with the 5000 entries expected 5000 entries so here i am giving maximum features which we can collect here is 5000 stop words i'm giving here as an english okay so stop words you basically know those uh, words uh, basically uh, that means we don't have a significance of uh, being uh, taking them in our uh, implementation for example uh and in the so these words are the stop words okay so here we are taking the stop words of english next what we are going to do is we are going to fit the tags in a method of count vectorizer that is fit underscore transform for that we need to convert it into array okay first we need to convert it in, uh, not first okay we need to transform it okay and then uh, that is should be in a form of an array transform this and uh, convert it into vectors okay now if you don't do this operation to array then definitely it will give you an error okay so ultimately the transformation process has been done for the tags we need to convert it into two arrays okay and this is your vectors 
now we are going to print the shape of the vector so for example here we are having 4802 that means these are number of rows and 5000 that means these are the features these are the vector features and here are the names we can uh, print the names of the features available so here are certainly the names what we collected we haven't applied any uh, stemming we haven't applied any uh, limitization here uh, if there is a word like stand standing so both will be counted separately we are not taking any stem of the root words okay everything i'm just been considering okay so the length of the feature names here as we know that we did took the maximum length as 500 5000 so here also we are getting it as 5000 the next is we are going to apply important thing we did model with the help of contractorizer and the important thing which we need to apply here is the cosine similarity cosine similarity so what is this cosine similarity for the recommendation model we are going to apply it so um, our model should be capable of finding the similarity between the movies because uh, once there is uh, similarity then only uh, it will recommend you the compatible movies for it okay so the cosine similarity basically what happens here is it works on the concept of cosine distance to calculate the similarity of the tax okay so ultimately we are going to find the distance between the vectors vector points okay for example for any movie we are having certain vector points and uh, we need to find uh, the other vector points for the different movies so if the distance is less respectively okay so that will be going to be uh, having a match okay there will be a match so here the scikit learn provides a class for calculating pairwise cosine similarity okay basically if you talk about uh, the importance of cosine similarity in data mining it has uh, been widely used because uh, it measure the distance with dimensions representing features of data object in a data set so we are available with the data set our data every data in our data set has some dimensions okay then we used to calculate the distance of that particular data with another another data okay if this distance is less then there will be high degree of similarity okay if the distance is less then there will be uh, high similarity and the distance is more that means uh, you know uh, your features has been distributed widely that means those features are not resembling and if they are not resembling that means there is no cosine similarity so we can't uh, put them in in a same scale okay and uh, um, this is helpful in determining how similar the data objects are irrespective of their size so whatever be the size of the data no worries only we are going to look forward for the similarity between them okay so in cosine similarity the data objects in a data set are treated as a vector they are in a vector notation and the formula for uh, the cosine similarity is given as cos x y x dot y slash x star y where x dot y is the dot product and uh, you can see the mod of x and mod of y these, this is the length of the two vectors okay and uh, here we are finding the cross product of the two vectors x and y okay so cosine similarity basically works with the vector operations okay so uh, here as we know that in mathematics for example we are having uh, a point will be located on uh, on a plane okay so we have uh, its representation as for example 2x plus uh, 2i plus uh, 3j plus 4k for example on x y and z axis if we're talking about okay so the one is like x equal to 2i plus 3j plus uh, 4k and next one is like uh, for example y equal to uh, 7i plus 8j plus 10k so you know we need to apply the dot product between them and then we need to apply the cross product between them this will let you know the cosine similarity okay for that we are importing the cosine similarity here from the sklearn dot matrix dot pairwise cosine similarity we are applying cosine similarity over the vectors okay its shape will be 4802 4802 okay, this will be the shape so we are applying the cosine similarity over the vectors so here are the similarity measures these are the similarity measures 
okay if i print the similarity measure for the first row okay so already we are having 4802 that means 4802 rows and 4802 columns okay so 4802 these are respectively the similarity for your first row okay then what we need to do is we need to uh, enumerate why enumerate because enumerate is a useful function in python that returns both indexes and the values of the list okay so here we have created an array that is a uh, like and uh, array for all the features these are respectively the values for every features we are having 4802 features all the values are present here and we are going to perform the enumeration how enumerate similarity zero that means we are going to pick we are going to pick its value also okay and its index also both we are going to pick indices and the values both okay so this is the value and this is the index index okay and reverse equal to true that means uh, uh, we are printing the values from top to the bottom okay that means higher similarity to the lower similarity this has been done like uh, with the help of lambda uh, we are applying the keys that means it is in the form of a lambda function x colon x1 okay 1 colon 6 means we are taking the top 5 okay so you can see that we are having the top 5 entries okay so uh, here is enumeration for the list it will giving you the values that means indices and the values both for the list so enumeration will give you indices and the values for both for the list we are preparing the list of it and that list will also be in a sorted order order so th the sorting has been done according to the top five this is what we are going to perform the next is a very important method that is the recommendation method recommendation method what we are going to do in the recommendation method is uh, we are giving a movie because this is something which we need to recommend so movie is something which you give from your side okay this is a movie okay and we need to find the recommendations from it till now we have find all the percent similarity between uh, the all the vectors which are present in our data data set okay we have found the percent similarity now we need to perform the recommendations so for recommendations what we are going to do is movie underscore index equal to new df new df title okay equal to equal to movie dot index zero that means we are fetching the movie index which is being given by the user okay so user here is the method recommend okay for example let us consider uh, recommend and i am giving the dark knight rises this is the movie i am going to give so the dark knight rises will go into this movie into this movie data okay as an argument then here in my data frame i am going to tell you that this movie has been present or not okay and then i'm going to fetch its index okay what is the index now with the similarity scores whatever the index which i am getting of that particular movie i'm going to give it here in a movie index okay in a movie index which i did calculated above i'm going to give here in the similarity and i'm going to get the distances for it and then after getting the distances same technique which i did above i will find the top five uh, distances okay top five distances so here it is movie list equal to sorted list enumerate distances which i get from above reverse equal to true reverse equal to true okay and then key lambda x colon uh, x1 one uh, colon six that is the top five recommendations i am going to find from here i did explain to you about what is this going to perform enumerate will return the index and the value it will be going to be for the list and they will be in a sorted order okay so they will be organized in a reverse reverse is true okay so that means ascending to descending descending to ascending will be okay now for i in movie list for i in movie list because i'm getting five values here okay five values here this these are the five values i'm going to print whatever the index of these i'm getting because i'm getting here the index whatever the index i'm getting i'm going to print its title dot title okay so for i in movie list print new underscore df dot ilc zero dot title okay so whatever be the values of i which i will be getting uh, 
from above in, in the list. Okay, I'm printing all these uh, values with respect to the index and here are the titles. Okay, for each and every. So here I'm going to collect all the values and index and on the behalf of the values and the index, index, I'm going to print the titles. Okay. So this is what for a, for certain movies I did perform the operation that is Avengers, The Age of Ultron, Iron Man 3, Spider-Man 3, Toy Story and so on. Now what's next you, you need to do is you need to store this uh, model which you have created. Okay. So we are going to use a library called as Pickle. Okay. So Pickle is a library which is used to convert the Python object into character strings because uh, ultimately we need to store our uh, model uh, so that we can uh, use this particular file of model to various other purposes. If we need to deploy our uh, model and perform the recommendation either on the local host or either on the web, so this will be very much helpful. So uh, here I am using a library called as import pickle. So pickle is a way to convert that means uh, Python objects such as list, dictionary, etc. in a form of a character streams. So uh, this is a character stream which contains all the information which can be used to reconstruct the object in another Python script. Okay, so this model, okay, which we have created above can be used okay the data which we uh, did uh, worked about can be used for further purposes and it has been stored in the form of a pickle pickle format okay so here it is a dump file will be created pickle dot dump new df this is our new data frame new data frame that means it's a data frame of uh, uh, three features which we did incorporated Okay, that means it consists of uh, your what is your new df new df is here the new df comprises of your id title and the tags okay so i'm creating a pickle file of it okay i'm saving uh, this particular data frame okay in a writable mode and i'm also uh, saving its similarity score which we did calculated above in the form of similarity dot pickle in a writable mode okay so this is how you can create dumb files of uh, these two movies data frame also okay uh, movies and it will be opened by this name okay movies underscore df dot pickle and similarity dot pickle by these two names okay the, uh, these will uh, will be saved your new df also and similarity also by these two names they will be saved in a writable mode uh, in a form of a dump file and where they will be saved they will be saved in a folder from where your application has been running so my application has been running uh, from my python uh, folder that is this jupyter notebook has been running from there so in my python folder only these two named file will be saved now the next thing is if i print the titles so here is the array values of the titles okay so what i'm going to do is uh, it's a better thing uh, to convert our data frame into dictionary Okay, so new data frame, let's consider, rather than saving it in a form of a data frame, it's better convert it into dictionary and then again save it into dictionary format. So previously what I did is, I saved it in a form of a data frame only. Okay, this is my, I took data frame only. This data frame I did saved with the name uh, movies underscore df dot pickle. Now what I did it, uh, did, uh, did is, I converted into dictionary. And then I have saved it into movies underscore dict dot pickle. So this one is better rather than saving it into dictionary because uh, I will be working on data frame on my next uh, section. Okay, but uh, here it's okay to save it in a dictionary format and uh, convert it into dictionary. That's uh, what I'm going to save. Convert it into dictionary. Save it into your uh, pickle file. Okay. And uh, here is your first part of the project. We have created the recommendation system. Okay, and we can uh, recommend any of the movie with this particular project. Now, the next thing is what you have to do. You need to deploy this uh, on your local host with the help of a streamlet. So, here is another code. So, streamlet is basically used to turn the data scripts into shareable web apps, web applications. Okay, 
here you will not have to create uh, any uh, you know html tags and pages and something like that's so, no uh, it streamlit is a library it's a very very uh, useful library in which you can write the python scripts python code and it will convert into web applications it will convert your task into web applications so for that you need to install the streamlit first so you need to install pip install streamlit before using the streamlit okay and the details of the streamlit has been available on this uh, particular website on its uh, website that is streamlit.io okay you can check the details all right so we need to create a web page for the application of uh, the task one that is a recommendation system which we have created how to do so import streamlit as st import pickle import pandas as pd i'm taking the three libraries which are used uh, for uh, our uh, creating the web application pickle streamlit is for uh, web applications obviously P pickle is because i need to import my dump file okay because that's why i need to take the pickle and pandas obviously data frame here also i did created the same method that is the recommendation because on a web page i am going to create a recommend okay because recommendation will be there for the movie so on the web page i am going to create a recommend so that is why i have taken definition recommend movie okay and the same operations all the same operations which i did uh, there also i am doing here also what i'm going to do is uh, movie underscore index okay the same thing i need to collect the index of the movie which has been given by the user so user will give us the movie okay what the recommendation he or she wants to search for so the movie name will be given by the user okay and uh, then here we are going to get the index of it that will be saved into movie underscore index for that we are going to calculate the similarity scores they will be uh, found in the distances and we are going to enumerate the distances for the list and they will be printed in a sorted order that will all be available in a movie list okay here we are going to create an empty list that is recommended underscore movies i apply for loop over movies list okay here i apply the for loop over movies list and append all the movies with the title in recommend underscore movies and then i'm going to return the, uh, return the movies and recommend underscore movies it's a very simple operations which we are going to do and um, the pickle file which we did saved okay so movies underscore dig that means we have saved our data frame uh, data frame new underscore df with the name movies underscore dig and i have converted that data frame into dictionary and then i have saved it into pickle file so this is what we are going to load okay so you have saved this thing into uh, pickle format so i am just going to load this in a read readable okay that was writable now i am going to read this i am converting this into data frame okay so let uh, pd dot data frame now it, um, previously you know it was uh, in data frame itself i converted into uh, dictionary i created uh, its dump file now i loaded its dump file and again converted into a data frame okay i i loaded similarity scores also here for my web page i gave a title st dot title so there are numerous uh, methods which are available in the streamlet okay there are numerous methods available in the streamlet you can uh, use it, those methods okay that is st dot title i uh, giving the title as movie recommendation system i am creating an option button okay option that will be named as st dot select box so this is an option button so select your movie it will give you an option there will be the movies title values the values will be available all the movies will be available you can have a drop down list of all the movies okay and you can select any of the movie so this will be select box okay so the option which you are going to select here i'm applying f st dot button equal to recommended recommend that means i'm going to create a button here is a title okay i'm going to create a title for my web page here is a, i'm going to give an option for in the in my web page and here i'm going to create a recommend button in my web page in my recommend button if st dot button recommend 
I am calling this method recommend. Option I will take from here. Option I will take from there and this will be given to this my recommendation function. This value will go to recommend movie. Everything will be calculated and it will be returned. After returning, I am going to apply the for loop for I in recommendations and I am going to write all the values. Okay, because why I am going to apply the for loop? Because the reason is whatever the recommendations I am getting, I need to print them all. Okay, so that is why uh, whatever the recommendations I receive from here, okay, because all will be available now in a form of a list. Okay, so that list will be present in the recommendations. So I am going to print every value of that particular list. So that is why I am going to have st dot write. I am applying for loop and printing all these values. So this is your web page, and what you need to do is you need to go to the file. You need to download this particular file in a py format. Okay, so you need to download this file into py format, and uh, since I am accessing my Jupyter Notebook from my Python folder, so your this particular file in .py format will be available in downloads. You need to pick this file from the download and paste it into your folder from where your application has been running, from where your streamlet has been installed. Okay, so I have taken this file into my Python folder. I changed its name. Its name is app app dot py. Okay, I changed its name, and its name is app dot py. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here is let me open the PowerShell. Okay, let me open the PowerShell. Okay, so here is a Windows PowerShell. Cd dot dot cd dot dot cd Python. Here is my path where my Jupyter notebook and I'm running everything in my Python folder. Here only my uh, app app.py file is stored. So the command which you need to write is to open that app on local host is streamlit streamlit run app.py streamlit run app.py and press enter. Okay, here it is. Now you can check your movie recommendation system app has been ready. So here you can see that here is the title for movie recommendation system. You got, uh, I have already mentioned that select a movie. This is your uh, select box. So here you can see that there is a select box. Okay, so here is a drop down list. You can see all the movies available here. Okay. So by default of the that is the first movie uh, coming here and there is one button that is called as recommend. Okay, so here you have created a recommend button, st dot recommend button. From there you are going to give all the options that will be calculated from recommend function. Here is the recommend function. Okay, everything has been calculated there. Okay, and uh, for example, I need to find the recommendations for avatar. So let's press this button and here is the recommendations. So all these movies are similar or compatible to Avatar. Okay, if I need to take any other movie, for example, I take Spider-Man 3, the recommendations for Spider-Man 3, I'm getting these all recommendations. Any other movie, if you want to check any movie, for example, Men in Black 3, if I want to have a recommendation for it, so here is the recommendation. Okay. So we have deployed our website on the local host. Okay, that's what we did till now. The next thing is we need to take it to the Heroku. Okay, so for Heroku, you need to create an account on Heroku. So the website for Heroku, Heroku. Okay, here is your, uh, you need to, on Google, you can go on the Google. In Google search, you can write Heroku, H-E-R-O-K-U. It will open you the Heroku. And if you don't have any account on Heroku, you can create a free account on Heroku. Okay. So I have already created my account is already available on Heroku. You can also register on uh, Heroku website. After registering on uh, Heroku website. Okay. Let me show you. This is what you will get. 
after login after login it will display you create a new app like this create a new app you can go and click it here okay this this will be the page for you after registering on heroku website okay it will let you know uh, that uh, do you want to create a new app so you can write like this okay app name is something you can create any name movie and uh, dash recommender dash system dash new this is the new app which you are going to create okay and then get create app so after registering you will get inside into the heroku okay and uh, you will be going to see this page and uh, you can give any app name there movie recommender uh, new like so this is something uh, go to create app okay now after creating an app what you need to do is here you can see you need to deploy okay you need to deploy your app on heroku okay so um, heroku is based upon uh, your uh, again it's a cloud model okay where you can deploy your web or web applications so in you, you will go here into deploy it will automatically when you once you create an app so it will go to the deploy section okay and then here you need to have heroku git you need to use command line interface for the heroku okay if you, if i click on heroku git this is the first thing you need to do heroku git use heroku cli okay heroku cli if you don't have heroku cli you need to install heroku cli so download and install option is available let me click here heroku cli you will get this page you will you will be transferred to this page okay and here are the options windows 64 bit installer 32 bit installer whatsoever okay so i have already installed heroku cli i'm already available with heroku cli so i did not been again installing this thing okay so uh, what i did for this purpose let me tell you i have created a folder that is called as movie recommender I have created in my C drive, I have created a folder movie recommender. In movie recommender, I am going to install that Heroku CLI. Okay, so when it asks asks you for the installation, you perform custom installation. Okay, so I have installed the complete Heroku CLI into my Heroku folder. Okay, fine. So once you are done with the installation, then again get back get back to the deploy section okay we are going uh, going back to the deploy section now next what you need to do is you need to log into your heroku though i am already logged in okay as i uh, though i am already logging into my heroku what you need to do is uh, just uh, delete this windows powershell okay again you do one thing go to your windows powershell okay just uh, let me cd dot dot cd dot dot cd um, movie okay um fine let me go movie underscore what is the name of our folder the name of our folder was movie recommender okay so movie underscore recommender okay then uh, heroku heroku login what was the command the command was heroku login heroku login press enter okay press uh, here you can you have to press any uh any key okay let, let's press any key okay i pressed any key okay and here it came and uh, from this side you are logged in okay then close this page after login just just close this thing i'm i'm already logged in what you need to do it's better idea that you need to create certain files before you deploy your app on Heroku, you need to create certain files. These files I have already created 
in my movie recommender folder okay the first file is the requirements file okay let me show you requirement file the requirement file comprises of streamlit pickle and the pandas what you need to do is these three other libraries which i use in my app.py okay the better thing is um, pickle and the pandas are already available in python during runtime so it's better don't take these two files just only take a file that is called as the streamlit because this is something which has been required for us required for us to perform the operation okay just take streamlit only and save it the name of this file will be requirements.txt the name of this file will be requirements.txt okay so this file i have created the next file is the proc file okay proc file here's the proc file and uh, it's better let me okay for the proc file let me help you with something better option see i have already if you don't have any github account it's better to create a github account okay for these kind of purposes okay so i have created one github account i have already having i have already logged in into my github account in github account what you need to do you need to create a repository okay you need to create a repository repository can be done like this okay you can uh, you can go your repository and from uh, your repositories you can create a new repository by here okay so i'm already having movie underscore uh, movie dash recommend repository after creating a repository uh, which i was uh, teaching you that create a requirement txt file and also thing is better you do one thing oh create a github account create a repository with any of the name okay and you need to upload certain files to this repository those files which i was creating separately that i will create and i will upload it here okay so my first file was requirements underscore txt and uh, there i took only one uh, one that is streamlit equal to equal to 1.12.2 uh, this is the version of the streamlit which i have installed uh, in my system okay so i will create requirement.txt file and i will upload it on my repository this is the first file uh, which i will do okay please don't uh, do a mistake or something please don't get confused what i'm telling you is just create a notepad file with the name requirements.txt and mention uh, the library which you are using it there for example uh, streamlit.1.12.2 Twenty-two. This is the library which I installed in my uh, Streamlit. Okay, so this is my requirement file, and I upload this file over my, my particular repository. Name movie underscore recon. This one file I will uh, upload. Second, I will uh, upload my proc file. Okay, proc dot txt. So this is proc. The uh, proc file means. Uh, what you need to do is you need to run your streamlit application you need to run your streamlit application so here it is the streamlit run app.py okay you need to create a shell okay because you need to run your web application a shell you need to create okay that will be named as set, uh, setup.sh that i will let you know so what you are going to do just copy this complete thing copy this complete thing okay create that means uh, open your notepad and just save it here okay and file save this is what you need to create okay so in a notepad one notepad for the requirement requirements.txt another will be your notepad file that comprises of proc file profile.txt in profile.txt you need to write this web colon sh uh, setup.sh and and streamlit run app.py this is what you need to write save okay this is what you need to write fine so i have created two files again now this is setup.sh 
again open the notepad and copy these contents okay copy these contents on notepad copy these contents okay this is uh, something I, I can't show you but you do one thing this is the content okay open your note, notepad uh, notepad and write all these contents over it so what basically um, we are doing in setup uh, sh sh is uh, we are creating a directory okay over the server we are going to create a directory we are going to establish a connection with the server okay and we are going to uh, create a config file config.toml file over it okay and uh, we are interacting with the server uh, we are going to deploy our uh, streamlit file over the server okay for that purpose uh, there is a shell okay a platform on which we need to show our web page so definitely uh, this is all going to work for the deployment so this is your third file okay the first file is of requirements just only write streamlit there save it second file is your prop file i have already mentioned you what to write in the prop file third file is your uh, setup dot sh file and this is what you need to write over it so all these three are the notepad files okay uh requirements dot txt proc proc file what you have to write proc file dot txt and this is setup dot sh okay all the three will be created on notepad but the extension the extension of profile will be txt the extension of requirements will be txt the extension of setup will be dot sh okay all these files you create upload it on your um, repository and you need to upload one more file that is app.py app.py is already the file which uh, uh, i have already explained you this is your app.py file this I have already uh, explained to you. Okay, uh, so this is just you need to upload it as it is on movie dash t command. So this is how you have created your repository. Okay, after creating your repository, now again get back to the Heroku. Do one thing, connect to the GitHub. Okay, connect to the GitHub. Okay, you need to connect to the GitHub. Fine. And here is my GitHub, and I need to check which repository name I need to connect. So here is the repository name, movie dash recommend. This is the repository with which I need to connect. So do search for it. Okay, I found it. This is a repository. Now I'm going to connect it. Okay, I'm connected. I'm connected to my GitHub with this repository. And then what I need to do, I need to deploy branch okay i need to deploy the branch okay here it is deploy branch okay it's building the connection okay all the files all the libraries will be downloaded everything will be downloaded Okay. So it will take some time for the processing. All right, done. Launching. Okay. So, we have deployed, okay, it's loading the output, okay, here it is. Our app was successfully deployed over the Heroku. So, this is how you can deploy your app over the Heroku, okay. So, let's end with our uh, movie recommendation. Uh, project you can click on view and you can check your website for the deployment next okay so this is all about the project related to the movie recommendation system we created that we have deployed it on the local host and we have deployed it on the heroku also okay so
Thanks for watching.